Welcome back everyone and uh, today today we're harvesting our carrots and we had a few volunteer tomato plants show up and I kind of just left them so right now I'm harvesting these carrots out from underneath a few tomato plants which is fine we're gonna let the tomatoes grow they're not hurting anything but uh, we need to get these carrots out the ground. This looks like um, kind of a mess over here, but it's actually probably the best carrot harvest that I've ever had. I know that's not saying a whole lot, but you know, it's kind of the, the little victories that you, know, you just keep getting better and better every year, and I'm hoping next year I'm gonna have an even better year yet. And then we're gonna go in. Yeah, I'm going to show you guys how to process these guys. Alright, today we're going to start out uh, pretty simple here. All we're going to start doing is whoa, cutting off the, the greens of the carrots. And I got a sink of water here. And we're just uh, going to let them soak in there. Get some of the extra dirt off. Hey guys, if you like this video, give me a big thumbs up. It really helps us out here at Gagne Farms. All right, back into it. All right, we got the tops off all our carrots here, and we're just giving it one more rinse quick, and then we're gonna start peeling our carrots. Okay, I want to show you guys the uh, difference between the two different kinds of carrots that we planted. This is a Danvers carrot, and it's a shorter, stockier type of carrot. And these are mochum, and they're a little bit longer. Uh, something like that that's a that's a mochum right there so a little bit different we just wanted to try the different varieties this year we grew dampers last year they did fine um, but I do like how the the mochums are you know a little bit longer like a traditional carrot you get out of the store so anyways we are just trimming up the ends here you know any bad spot or you know we see there's a few of them that did get a little bit of bug damage that we're just gonna throw out so uh, and then just start peeling so once we get all these carrots peeled up, I will show you the next steps as to how we are going to process and preserve our carrot harvest this year at Gagne Farms. I've also got a few extra things that we're going to do as well to show you. Um, since I don't have a full canner full of carrots, I'm going to do a few extra things in there as well at the same time so you can maximize your time canning different types of things in the same canner at the same time. Hey guys, a couple things real quick. I'm going to link these products down below so you can find them real easy. Uh, it's, you know, I'm not going to make a killing off the thing or nothing, but uh, there are Amazon links and I do make a little bit. It doesn't cost you any more than if you just went and found them yourself. Uh, but I make a few cents per, uh, per item sold or whatever. All right guys, we got our food processor here and I've got the Slice and dice an attachment. Just gonna throw that in here quick. And you know, I've got I know I've got a lot of uh, smaller carrots here, and that's fine. What I'm gonna do is some of the little ones like this. Um, I do like to have like a baby carrot, uh, fuller carrot like that for some of my uh, roast. So I'm gonna not I'm not gonna um, slice these up. But what I am gonna do with some of the larger ones. And we're going to slice these up into slices and uh, we like to just steam those or, or cook them and eat them uh, just as a, you know, a side dish to them. So that's what we're doing. Got some hot jars here that we ran through our dishwasher and I'm just gonna pack some of these uh, smaller carrots in there and some of them that might be a little bit long we'll just cut in half quick. So we're just loading this this jar up here. It's pretty pretty easy. You want to leave um, about an inch of head space on these when we're all said and done but I don't really think it's gonna, we're gonna have that problem here in this one. So these are great for uh, venison stew, um, 
a roast, uh, you know, a good uh, roast in the winter with some carrots is from the garden. Oh, you can get a better meal than that right there. And what we're going to do next is fill them with water. So I will show you that in one minute. Now we're just going to get a pot of water. A um, few cups of water probably is all you're going to need. And we're just going to heat up on the stove until it's boiling. I'm going to do one other thing while the water is boiling on the stove here for the carrots. I got uh, well, a quart or so of of green beans here that we picked out the garden and I'm gonna can these up as well so I'm just gonna rinse these off good cut off the ends and put them in jars we prefer to use the wide mouth pints here uh, that's just what we use as for our you know family dinners is we wouldn't use um, a quart jar of green beans but uh, if your family is large enough and likes green beans uh, I would suggest using a wide mouth quart jar as well. All right, guys, I want to take time uh, for just a minute while our water is boiling here on the stove to show you two books that I uh, highly suggest that you guys pick up. One of them is the uh, ball book for home preserving. This thing is loaded with recipes and how to's and all sorts of tips and tricks to get you pressure canning and hot water bath canning, all sorts of things, you know, like the low acid stuff that we're doing today. Uh, there's jams and jellies and meat. I mean, there's all sorts of things in here. It says on here, there's 400 delicious creative recipes for today. And the other one is the Ball Blue Book. And this is the blue, the guide to preserving the Ball Blue Book. And this has five over 500 recipes in it. And I just got this, I just started using this this year, and it's fantabulous. Uh, and there's a bazillion things in here, let me tell you. And each book is a little bit different. So just so you think if you have the one book, that, you know, it's gonna be all copied or whatever in the other book, it's not, it's, it's, it's different. So if there's any two books I could uh, recommend for preserving and canning and hot water bath canning your food, um, you know these these two would be it and there's also um, articles in there for uh, freezing and dehydrating and all sorts of stuff so you guys check it out all right I think our water is just warming up here and I'm gonna get our ladle out and we're gonna ladle our hot water into our jars and we're gonna leave about an inch of head space and we're gonna make sure to get any of the bubbles out as well so I'm gonna stick a something down there and probably a spoon or something and uh, we'll get the bubbles out quick and then we're going to put our lids and bands on and we're going to put it out on the pressure cooker and I'll show you guys that in just a minute. In this canning kit I'll link down below they have a funnel, a ladle, and this little measure shows how much head space you can measure on your jars like this. Uh, and then you can turn it around as well and then take all the air bubbles out and just kind of move it around. Real simple. We're going to wipe our rims here and then put our lids and bands on. And bands. And when you put these bands on, guys, don't be He-Man, okay? Just, uh, let's see if I can show you here real quick. I just put it on there not even it's barely snugged on you gotta leave some room in there for the uh, seal to kind of expand and contract the fuzz and for any gases and pressure to release out of there so you, you, you don't need it tight all right guys we are outside with the canner here I just want to show you guys a couple quick tips um, when you're pressure canning, you want to have three quarts of water in your canner, and that's it. You don't need a whole full thing of, uh, of water in your canner at all. Just take three quart jars and add to your canner. The other thing you can do is add a little shot of lemon juice. Uh, it'll help from uh, staining inside of your canner. See how that inside of that canner has got a little bit of staining on it? Uh, it's because one time I didn't add the lemon juice so uh, it's actually coming back out just keep adding it like that uh, the other thing that some channels don't show either is you need your separator on the bottom 
So you don't want your jars to be directly on the bottom of your pressure canner. So we're gonna go ahead and put that in, just like that. And our heat is on, and we're gonna put our jars in. All right, guys, our heat is on here, and we're gonna go and put our jars in. We ended up with, uh, let's see, we got five pints of our carrots. We got three pints of green beans, and I got a half pint of carrots as well. So I'm gonna leave the six on the bottom like that. I know you can put more in, but with the little half pint there, I want a couple jars on top. Put another separator on, just like that. And go ahead and put your last few jars up. All right, so with green beans and carrots, it has a uh, real close to the same processing time. So uh, I believe with carrots, it's uh, 25 minutes for a pint. And with green beans, it's 20 minutes a pint. I do them together all the time, never had a problem. I just let it go for that 25 minutes and everything seems to work out just fine. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go put our lid on and then we're gonna wait for that, uh, the steam to come out of our vent. And I'll show you that as soon as it happens. There is steam coming out of the vent, okay? So once the steam starts coming out the vent like that, you need to put your weight on, a 10 pound weight, and then wait until it starts jiggling. Once it starts jiggling good, then start your timer for 25 minutes. All right, guys, we got, uh, we got our weight jiggling here, okay? So we're gonna set a timer now for 25 minutes, and then I will show you exactly how to depressurize this canner. I just want to take a minute, guys. If you like this video, give me a big thumbs up. I really appreciate it. Helps out the old algorithm. I'm sure you guys all know about that by now. So, thanks a lot. Okay, guys, we've got our canner here, and uh, it is time to turn it off. So, all we're going to do is turn off the heat. We're not going to take it off the heat. We're not going to remove the weight or anything. All I'm going to do is shut the heat off, okay? So, that's what we're doing right now. Just shutting the heat down, just like that. And we want to let this depressurize on its own. We don't want to force it. Um, you don't want to try to take the lid off or take the um, weight off or anything. My canner, this is a Miro canner. I'll link it down below. And it has a little button right here in the handle. And it is actually up right now. Uh, when that drops down, that means that the, cat, the canner is depressurized. So usually what I do is I let the let depressurize by itself, just like it is right now. Once the uh, button in the handle drops down, then I'll take the weight off and I usually let it wait, I don't know, maybe 10 minutes or so. You probably don't need to. It's just, I kind of let things uh, depressurize and cool down on their own. It seems to work real well for me, so. That's what we're gonna do and I'll show you that. As soon as this drops, I'll, I will show you guys um, taking this lid off and, and pulling this stuff out real quick, okay? Okay guys, we got our, uh, our little lock button here. It has went down and we can take our weight off now. I'm gonna open the top here, but I'm gonna set my camera down and grab a couple hot pads. There's sometimes can be some steam that comes up still and it'll get you on the on the forearm. So I like to wear some gloves. Welding gloves. All right, here we go. See, just that little bit of steam like that is all I'm trying to prevent. Uh, I just don't wanna scorch my arm or anything. So this stuff looks great. Now see, I don't know if you can tell, but these um, carrots are actually still boiling, so the beans are too. So when you guys pull this stuff, you got to be real careful because it is it has been under pressure in cooking for quite a while. What you want to do is just pull these out and let them rest. You don't want to do anything else. Don't, don't mess with them at all, okay? Let them sit overnight. Maybe you get home from work or something tomorrow and uh, you can check them then. There's no point in messing with them right now. So it uh, looks like I just lost my son too. So, okay guys, uh, here, I'm gonna show you guys what we got going on here. jar 
are still bubbling. So that's why we want to let them guys just sit there and, and calm down. And that, my friends, is one way you can preserve your harvest for years to come. All right, we'll catch you on the next one.